couple things that are happening. So Jersey City is obviously blessed for uh, infrastructure that is fairly unique. Um, that's not to say that that's been the only reason that we've expanded in the last couple of years. I'd like to think that it has to do a lot with policies that have been implemented because a lot of that infrastructure has been there for decades. And as Gene mentioned, you haven't seen Journal Square expand or grow in 20, 30, 40 years. And right now we have uh, the first tower, 55 stories coming out of the ground. It'll be the first of six that are going up there. You will see significant crane activity in the next year there, as long as a 3,000 seat theater starting renovation next year. Outside of the infrastructure that we have there, um, we are working with the private sector as it relates to density bonuses in order to expand the light rail to different opportunities, uh, different segments of the community. Um, and that's going to work through zoning bonuses, through some of the redevelopment plans in order to entice them to be financing some of the light rail stops, uh, particularly in the area that right now sits fallow between Hoboken and Jersey City. You are seeing um, us working with the DOT. You'll hear from Jamie Foxx later today to better connect the Bergen Lafayette area to downtown via uh, roadways. You are seeing us right now expanding and reworking our bus transportation system. You are seeing us be the first city in the state of New Jersey that will have a fully integrated bike share system with City Bike in New York, which will mean that you could pick up a bike at Riverside or Washington Park in the Heights, ride it to Journal Square, leave the bike there with a single pass, get on the path system, and on the other side, pick up a uh, City Bike and continue on your way to work. That may not be for everybody in this room, but there are people who do that. And uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, we are constantly thinking about uh, you know, what the city will look like in the next four, five, 10 years. And we think that uh, we're planning effectively um, without cars. And uh, that's really important. So the expansion is far beyond just Journal Square and Grove Street. Yeah, if I could add to that too, I mentioned before that part of the problem with North Hudson development was there's no mass transit. And one of the, uh, the first mass transit that came to the area was New York Waterway, uh, Arthur Imperator's vision. Um, that was really the first, uh, any form of mass transportation in North Hudson. The second thing was the political community got together and decided to build the Hudson Bergen light rail. And that opened up North Hudson to development. Um, um, without that, we were not moving forward at all. So, so, you know, we get criticized in Hudson County for a lot of things, but all 12 communities, all elected officials agreed that the, the Hudson Bergen Light Rail was critical. And it goes from Bayonne now all the way up to North Bergen. And, and, for, the, and, and for the record, I tweeted that to myself, that question. 